So in some of my other videos I've been using uh, Robot C as the programming language but we do have other programming languages for the um, VEX IQ system. So I'm going to do a few videos now looking at the basics of the ModKit programming language which will be popular because it has its roots very much in Scratch and, uh, and there'll be a lot of students at, at Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3 that are familiar with Scratch and so the blocks programming system um, that ModKit uses will, will be very familiar to them and it'll be very easy to pick up. Um, so I'm going to do a few different videos and uh, to break it down into to the various programming sections we're going to look initially at just some really simple driver control um, and I'll also do some on the, the sensors um, and, and autonomous programming as well. But this one is purely to get you set up on the drivetrain, so moving your robot around. Um, it's really easy to do in ModKit, and there are some, some nice simple blocks that they've put in there to, to make it easy. Um, it's really a matter of setup rather than programming at this stage. Um, so we'll use the programming element much more for, for some of the other motors, but for our drivetrain it really is just a, a simple case of setup. So this is what ModKit looks like when you first open it. We have a blank program. Um, the brain is already in position. And we're in the, the robot window here at the moment. There's also the blocks window, which we'll look at later. But we're just in the robot window. And the robot window is for setting up um, and configuring the various motors and sensors and letting ModKit know which port those are plugged into. Uh, OK, so we're going to use the drivetrain block. If you scroll down in the palette of parts on the left, You've got a drivetrain block here. We drag that in. Okay, and uh, on here we've got two drop-down boxes for our um, for drivetrain motors, and you notice in the bottom right here we've got a little gear icon, which is for um, the setup of uh, of the various parameters that we can adjust. So if I click on that, bring up a dialog box. I'm not going to cover all of the other. Um, all of the other boxes here at the moment because they're not particularly important unless you're using some of the advanced functions of the drivetrain setting in programming and I'm not going to cover those in this video because there are better ways of, of, um, of controlling your robot in Autonomous. These are all um, parameters that are there to allow ModKit to try and calculate um, how many turns it needs to make on wheels, uh, on the left and right wheels, to do um, angled turns. So if you say you want to turn 90 degrees, it will try and calculate how, how far the right-hand wheels need to go and how far the left-hand wheels need to go to make that turn based on these parameters. It's, uh, it's okay, but it's not particularly reliable because it doesn't take into account things like um, slip, uh, slip, so lack of friction, if any of the wheels slip, what happens there? The, the, you know, the market thinks it's turned further than it actually has. So when we're doing the turning, uh, we'll be using the gyro for that, and it's a much more accurate way of doing it. So in this uh, box, all we're really interested in is the motor layout drop-down. And you've got four motors, um, or two motors, front and rear. So f uh, two motors rear is what we've got here. The motors drive the rear wheels. Two motors front. Two motors again, but the motors drive the front wheels, and four motors, you've got one motor for each wheel. In practice, on a competition robot, you'll probably never use four motors on a drivetrain uh, for a competition bot, because you've only got a six motor allowance in the rules. Your robot can't have any more than six motors, and so to use four of them on the drivetrain doesn't leave you many for, uh, for other functions. So my robot's got two. Um, and that's all I, all I need to set up for, the, for this. So because I've got two, that means there's two drop-down boxes and I need to tell ModKit which ports my motors are plugged into. So in my case, ports 4 and 12, you need to set those to whatever they are on your robot. And you'll see when I plug them in, when I connect those, uh, these little cable icons appear and it tells me what port they're plugged into. And likewise on the brain, I've now got a cable going into port 4 and port 12. It shows me that those, um, those ports are used. Okay, so that's set up. Now I need to um, bring my controller icon in. So let's find the controller in the uh, in the palette. Drop that block in, and now I've got this block uh, as part of my robot setup. When I go back to drivetrain, I've got this new icon up here, a little controller here. And click on that, and if you take a look at your controller, you'll see that um, all of the axes on it are 
labelled um, and all of the various buttons are labelled. So we've got left button, right button, E and F on the front and then the two joysticks there, we've got A, B, D and C. Um, so A is forwards and backwards uh, on the, the left stick, B is left and right on the left stick, D is forwards and backwards on the right stick and C is uh, left and right on the right stick. What I'm going to do is, for my axis D, I'm going to set this up to have uh, what we call arcade control. Um, it's commonly referred to. So forwards and backwards on one joystick and left and right on the same joystick is what controls my robot. So in this case, I'm going to drop down axis D and make that drive forwards and backwards. Axis C, turn left, right. Simple as that. If I wanted the tank control set up, I would have D, which is forwards and backwards on this stick, I would have as my right hand drive, so that just is the, the right hand wheels, and A, which is forwards and backwards on this stick, as my left hand wheels. So that's a basic tank setup. I'm going to go for arcade. Looks something like that. Okay, now I'm set up. I can click uh, the close button there on that dialog box, get rid of that. Next, I need to give my program a name because I'm just about to download it. So I'll call it uh, Team C2. Then I need to choose a slot on the brain to download the program into. We've got four slots that we can download into, which means we can have four different programs stored at any one time on the brain, which becomes useful in competition, especially if you've got different autonomous routines that you want to be able to run for the, uh, for the programming skills part of the challenge. I'm going to use slot one, so I've clicked on slot one there. And then I just press the download button, connected to my robot via the, uh, the USB cable. Press the download button and it says programming device. And when that goes green and says programming OK, it's now downloaded. I can execute my program now by either pressing the check button on the brain um, on the correct program or I can just hit the play button here. So I need my joystick switched on because I'm using a... Um, a, a, a driver control program, so I need the joystick on, and if I run the program, play, there we go, I can now control my robot. So that's really, really basic setup, um, and it's the easiest way to get your, your robot up and running. And so in the next video, what we're going to look at is um, configuring my intakes and flywheel.